brothers and sisters god bless hope your night or day is going good i'm here with my brother in christ his name is lewis um destroying works of the devil is his youtube channel and so we did a critique we did two-part critique on her already this lady here and she has carpet bombed my subs she's carpet bombed his subs with the same verse over and over my brother is going to read it here we're going to go over it also that same night someone else come and carpet bombed our channel Lewis will tell you about it too. And we believe that there may be some relation as far as even blood relation, maybe her father. And I'm, that's my guess. I'm just indicating by the way that this gentleman appears in age in relation to her. And also they have the same, uh, looks like ethnic background just by their appearance. So and here's a, just a brief picture. And I'm going to come back and play a little clip of him, but also, um, you know, they have this appearance. They look together. They came the same night. So what do you think? They were kind of have the same gospel, too. What do you think, Lewis? Their gospel is identical. It's precisely the same gospel. Um, it's basically works, salvation. Um, it's devoid of any kind of believing or anything. It's almost like these people are absolutely disgusted with the thought of believing on Jesus Christ for your salvation. Um, and so they're enemies of the cross. But I think they're worse than that. I mean, you know, I think the worst thing you could call someone is a devil. And that's really how I look. So here's the comment that she left. Truth by Jesus is the name of the channel. And <clears throat> this was, you know, in response to a video I, me and Chris had made about her. It took her a little while, but she started to respond heavily. And she seems like she's got some what she would probably call righteous indignation going on. And so here goes, will you tell Christ Jesus he was not clear enough when he said, if you love him, you will keep his commandments. Capping love, capping keep, and capping commandments. You can love whatever lies of the devil your itching ears desire to hear. But Lord Jesus Christ will be the most righteous judge and reward every person according to his works. Capitalize his works. And she goes into Revelation 22, 11 through 12, with no exegesis. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come, quick, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to as his work shall be. And so there ha she had put it in the correct context, which is actually the KJV context there, or the KJV wording. And again, caps works here. She caps works here. And so, so this woman, you know, I, I had responded to her and I said, can you please exegete Philippians 3, 9, where Paul says he doesn't want to be found having his own righteousness? And can you even care to exegete Ephesians 2, 8, 9, where it clearly states we're not saved of any works? We can also go to Titus 3, 5 and see that it's not works of righteousness either. Uh, so she's trapped, this woman. Her theology is completely um, satanic. So did, and we're going to get into this right now. So did she respond to you at all when you left that for her? Oh, no. She never responded when I asked her to exegete those passages, no. Yeah, she just wants to present one facet of Scripture put things in a vacuum and pour her own meaning, which will create contradictions all over the place. Yeah, because in this passage, <clears throat> it says, um, let him who is, and we covered, you know, we covered this, I think it was in part two, we covered this passage. So yeah, had she listened, had she actually listened, and that's what I really figure about a lot of these people, they don't actually listen to the videos that we do, that we, we have done on them. But we do it nonetheless for the edification of other people who are, who are listening to these people but it, it says let him who is unjust let him be unjust still well we know from the scripture that how a person is justified we maintain a man is justified by faith 
apart from the works of law, that we get a justified non-guilty verdict independent from law performance, and that by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for only by the law comes the knowledge of sin. What she is teaching is ultimately, in order to be justified, to be not guilty in God's sight, you have to have law performance, which is a false, which is clearly a false gospel. Um, so she is filthy because she's not accepting, because she's actually trying to work to become justified and to become righteous. She's filthy. And that's what the verse goes on to say, he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. It's to the one who doesn't work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accredited to righteousness. So the one who's justified and made righteous, the one who's cleaned up, is the one who believes in Jesus. The one who doesn't is filthy before God. They're still in their sin. As Jesus said, unless you believe I am he, you will die in your sin. She doesn't believe that Jesus is the actual savior that saves us from our sin. And that's why the verse goes on to say, let him is righteous. Uh, let him be righteous still. Let him is holy be holy still. The holiness that we have is through the cross. Colossians chapter 1, verse 22, he reconciled us to himself, to Jesus Christ's body by his death, that we might be holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. That's our only boasting for being made holy. As Paul said, may I never boast except in the cross of Christ through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. There's only one singular means to boast for being made holy, and that's through the cross. She's actually boasting in her own works and her own performance, which is just, as the Bible says, all our righteousness is filthy rags before God. So she is still filthy. She is still unholy because she's not looking to the cross. Her boasting isn't in that. No, her, her boasting is clearly in her effort, which, look, firstly, she never gives the gospel to anyone. And in Matthew 25, when Jesus speaks towards the end of the chapter, he's telling the unrighteous, you have not fed me, you have not ministered to me, you have not clothed me, not giving me anything to drink. This is a spiritual comparison or, or an earthly comparison to, to produce a spiritual truth that th this woman is going to receive everlasting punishment for her works. That's what she's going to receive. She can't rightly divide the judgment seats. She thinks that everyone's going to appear at the final judgment. But it clearly says that the sea gave up the dead. Okay, 1 Thessalonians 4 says the alive will be caught up in the air. Th those who remain and are alive will be caught up in the air. And also the dead in Christ will rise first and forever be with the Lord. It will meet the Lord in the air and forever be with him. So this event happens before the final judgment. She even couches it like in the King James it'll, and other Bibles. It'll give you a brief uh, title for each you know, new thought line in the, in the passages there. It's the final judgment. So she's already putting herself there. But what's funny is that... Uh, in Romans 5, it says that, but God commandeth his love towards us. This is verse 8. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. She openly denies this. It's not even ambiguous. It's not even up for debate. She said clearly and very adroitly that, Jesus' blood will not save you. So yeah. he's in big trouble. Yeah. Yeah, that night she carpet bombed me. She carpet bombed your channel, all the subs, with the same repetitive. And that's why I, I blocked her, because I blocked people that don't exegete it either. She didn't really exegete or explain it like we're explaining it. You just explain how a person is just. So when it says he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Well, we see that we're justified by faith in his blood. The, the next part of the verse goes on, and behold, I come quickly, my reward is with me, to give every man according to his what his work shall be. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So I, I come quickly, my reward is with me, I give to everyone according to his work shall be. To those who believe, Jesus said, this is the work of God that you believe in the one that he sent. If you don't believe in the one that he send, sent, then you're not righteous before God, you're not holy, you're not justified. So 
our work, according to the Bible, this is the work of God to believe in the one that he sent. But then it goes on to say, blessed are the, they that do his commandments. See, this is how a person is justified. Now, a person that is ignorant of the functionality of the law think that when it says blessed are those who do his commandments, it's talking about the Ten Commandments, but this is talking about the First John Commandment. The same author that wrote this book, Revelation, wrote First John, and he says this is his commandment to believe on the name of the Son of God. And when you've kept that commandment, you're not under the law anymore. The law is a schoolmaster to lead us to faith in Christ, but once you've been justified by faith, you're no longer under the schoolmaster. Once you've kept the first John commandment to believe on the name of the Son of God, you're justified by faith, no longer under the schoolmaster. So then it goes on to say, and they may have the right to the tree of life and they may enter in through the gates into the city for without. Now, these are people, these are people that would be under the law, that they would have some relationship to the law for without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whoever loveth and maketh a lie. So if you're under the law, you will be found guilty. If you've kept his commandment to believe on the name of the Son of God, you're no longer under the law. The other scriptures show us that Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. That when you believe in Jesus Christ, the law has come to its end with its guilty verdict. You won't be found one of these measures of sin. Like another part of the scripture says, all liars have their part in the lake of fire. And yet it says all men are liars. We'd all be found liars under the law, but under law, we don't have that guilty verdict because we're not under it. It's only those that haven't kept that first John commandment to believe on the name of the son of God that aren't justified, that are still filthy in their sin because they haven't believed on the son of God, which unfortunately is this lady and she doesn't realize it. Right. The scripture says, let God be true and every man a liar. And so if you're not covered in his righteousness, if you don't have his imputed righteousness, which comes through faith, and only by faith, then you're a liar, period. No matter how much you're working to not lie, you're going to contradict yourself. You're going to be double-minded at some point. You're going to make a hypocrite out of yourself at some point. And if you actually think that you're never making any of these mistakes, because sometimes I honestly do have retrospect and realize that I kind of said something there that may not have totally been true. And then people will say, well, did you intend to do that? Then it's not a lie. Look, the law requires and demands absolute perfection. This woman believes that you are saved by keeping the top two commandments, which all the law and the prophets hang upon. Of thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love thy neighbor equally. You must love your neighbor as much as you love God. Love thy neighbor equally. Okay, so you, for her to say that she's doing this, the deception, I'm just convinced these are two people, whether that's her father or not, he espouses the precise ideas she does. These people are textbook narcissists, and what they're doing is standing under the banner of Christianity. And this happens a lot, whether the person actually a narcissist or not, you know, these people, I actually, I'd actually like to see a body language expert analyze their videos and see what they find, because a lot is said in the eyes and in the hands and in the body language. And it's some interesting stuff. I digress. The bottom line is this the super self-righteous, the people who have at least narcissistic tendencies that are very self-centered and, and believe very highly in themselves have no need to boast in Christ, right? Uh, so Jesus said he came to save sinners. He came to heal the sick. This woman would consider herself not sick. Um, at yeah. this point in time, she would consider herself absolute perfection, the glory of God. <laughs> That's what you would have to be to keep the top two commandments in the law. Yeah, and the clip that I'm getting ready to play, she that's exactly what she says. She talks about how that's how you enter into the kingdom of heaven by loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself, which all the law and the prophets hang on those two commandments. Um, I'm going to play that clip in a second. With that is, I'll say what? Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. The problem with that is that if you're going to be under that, no flesh shall be justified. That's the problem. Paul already laid the groundwork for the law that it's a schoolmaster. And remember when Paul says, nay, we established the law. 
We have not come to abolish law. Nay, oh, well, I paraphrase there. He says something, but the important part is he says, nay, we have come to establish the law, or we establish the law, he says. What Paul is saying is, hey, look, I know the law. I was the Pharisee of Pharisee. I was the Hebrew of Hebrews. I know the law. I established the law. I understand the law. I know its stringency. I know its level. I know that you can't meet it. And she's basically just defying him. That's why she only quoted, I think, one Pauline epistle verse, Romans 6.16 or something like that. Took it way out of context, isolated it. She doesn't want to deal with Romans 4 and 5. She won't even go near there. It'll destroy her entire theology. Yeah. And so we'll go to that clip in a second. I'll just the final other verses here in Revelations that that uh, have to do with the context that she posted goes on to say, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come, let him who hears come, let him who is thirsty come, let him who her will come and drink freely of the water of life without cost. Which is to believe, this is speaking about coming to Jesus, as Jesus said, I am the bread of life, he who comes to me shall never hunger, he who believes in me shall never thirst. All you have to do to be saved, to never thirst again, to drink freely, is just to believe. It has nothing to do with your works and your performance. Otherwise, if you had to work, you wouldn't be drinking freely, would you? If you had to work for this, you wouldn't be drinking freely. You'd have to merit it. You'd have to work in order to gain this. So. In order yes. to have eternal life, all you have to do is come to Jesus and believe in him. So um, what do you want to say, brother? I'm going to go to this clip here. Get this up. And I just wanted to add that she's like the woman at the well who didn't understand at first and said, are you talking about the water that our father Jacob gave us? And Jesus says, if you drink from that water, you will thirst again. So this woman is working so she's thirsty and she's hungry. She hasn't been filled with everlasting life. She doesn't have the Holy Spirit that witnesses with her spirit testifying that she is born of God through faith, like 1 John 5, 1 says. Anyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. <clears throat> Excuse me, he says, is born of God. This is a perfect tense. It's in the moment. It happens instantly when you believe the gospel with your heart and you believe unto righteousness, okay? And the reason why we have life is because we have righteousness. Without righteousness, there is no life. So this woman is unrighteous because she never believed uh, the gospel. She never received the righteousness of God in him. Yeah, and if she gets to that final day and she hasn't believed, she'll hear, let him who is filthy be filthy still. Let him is unrighteous be unrighteous still. Before I play this clip, I do want to play the father. At least that's my assumption. Again, I could be totally wrong. I think when I was talking with my brother here, Lewis, he wasn't so certain. He thinks there might be a possible relation. We see some similarities in the way that they appear. I'm going to play this short clip so you can hear him. We were I was thinking about doing some critiques, but he's actually, he's got a very thick accent. But, you know, he's, can speak English, but he has a thick accent, so it's kind of hard to hear. I'm going to play a little bit just so you can get a taste of what, what he's doing over here. So, as what I said, you, you give a delusion so that you may believe a lie. God said, oh, go ahead and believe a lie. You go, that means if you, you don't, if you're not for God and for the truth and for, if you don't love God, then God will need you also. Please, very quietly, he push you out of the way. And you think that you are a garden, you are jumping up and down in the churches, all this kind of things. But God is nothing to do with, with you. Uh, it will apply to both preachers as well as to the people. Not only preachers, and people also the same way. They don't love the truth, so they follow. He's a little bit difficult to, to hear. She's a little bit clear to hear, so we were addressing her and some of her points. And so here's a short clip of her. And we're going to play it. And this is going to be the heart of it because this is how she's saying that you enter into the kingdom of heaven this is how you're saved so she's going to give us the formula from her system how you're ultimately saved so i'm going to go ahead and play this clip it's very short this is the law and the prophets because it is the guiding truth of god's basic commandments those with a good conscience fear god and treat others as they want to be treated by obeying this guiding truth, they do righteous work 
and are doers of God's commandments. In Matthew 22:37 to 40, Jesus says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. These two commandments are all the law and the prophets because they capture the substance of God's truth required to enter the kingdom of God. If we obey these two commandments from the heart at the most basic level, we will do works of righteousness required to escape hell. If we obey these two commandments at the most advanced, intense level, we will do the works of righteousness that take us to the highest levels of reward and glory in heaven. So I'm going to stop right there. You want to comment on that, brother? <clears throat> Looks like she put the uh, verses in there in her own um, context about the reward system. Yeah. And how uh, Jesus says, he who keeps the least of these commandments and teaches you to do so will be called the greatest in heaven. And and then the one who doesn't do that uh, will be called the least. And so she's using that verse and she's putting it in her own context to try to say that if you keep the law to some degree, you'll escape hellfire. Right? So the one who taught these commandments and did them perfectly was Jesus. Okay, so this woman wants to literally be standing on her own little banner of righteousness in heaven with a smile and looking down her nose at people with her chin up. And she is just tippy top proud of herself. It's just yeah. incredible. I, I, it's sickening. Yeah. If we span out to the rest of scripture and the functionality of the law, nobody's keeping the commandments, but Christ kept the commandments. He can make that boast. But the, whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law that the whole world would become guilty before God and every mouth would be stopped. That under the law, everybody's guilty. Every mouth is stopped. No one can make the boast that they've kept the commandments. So that's only Jesus. But yeah, she is saying here that in order to get in the kingdom of heaven, you have to do the basic requirements of loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, loving your neighbor as you love yourself, which as Jesus said, all the law and the prophets hang on those two commandments. So what she's saying is ultimately to be saved, to enter into the kingdom of heaven, to be justified, ultimately, you have to keep the law. Again, to the one who works, it's not counted as favor, but as wages do. That is the one who's trying to get favor, trying to get eternal life, trying to get justified. They don't get favor. They get wages due on the day of judgment. It's to the one who doesn't work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly as faith is accredited to righteousness. The one who's not working in accordance to the law, but believing in Jesus who justifies the ungodly, which is a non-guilty verdict. His faith is accredited to righteousness. So she's clearly believing that she's justified by her works under the law, which as Paul said, you who seek to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace, you have been severed from Christ. So she's seeking to be justified by the works of the law. When she's using language like, well, to enter into the kingdom of heaven, and I'll play the clip back. When she's using that language that to, in order to get into heaven, you have to keep these commandments. She's seeking to be justified by the law. So I'll go ahead and play it yeah. uh, back. You want to comment on that? One more comment. Yeah. Um, it's Matthew 5, 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, he shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. And then he goes into... If you have hate in your heart, you're a murderer. And if you look with lust, you're an adulterer. So this is the Sermon on the Mount. This is where this woman thinks she's going to attain her righteousness from. She doesn't even understand what these verses mean. Uh, For I say to you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Well, how do you do that? Right? It, they didn't believe. They didn't have imputed righteousness. They had the outward appearance of righteousness. Right? But Jesus couldn't stand. And he called them hypocrites. And... He, he told us specifically to seek 
the kingdom of God and his righteousness, not our own. This woman clearly has gone on to establish her own righteousness. I mean, it's just shut down by scripture at every turn. Yeah. The only way that our righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees is according to Romans chapter 3, verse 22. It says that we have even the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Christ Jesus upon all and unto all who believe, and there is no difference. That when we believe in Jesus Christ, we have the righteousness of God. That exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, who were people who were striving by their works, trying to keep the Ten Commandments, trying to be made right and righteous, have a right standing in God's sight by their obedience to the law, which ended in catastrophic failure. She's she's high-minded enough to believe that she can perform better than they did. These were people that they strived under the law from the time they got up to the time they went to bed. They memorized every aspect of the law. They would come up to her and look at her as a very ignorant Gentile when they started, if they started questioning her about right. aspects of the law. Yeah, she'd be completely ignorant. And that's exactly what the Bible says. They being ignorant of God's righteousness are seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. She is ignorant of God's righteousness, that stringent standard. As you said, we establish the law. We show its stringency and its standard, showing that you could never be made righteous under it. She's ignorant of that standard. So in, in her ignorance, she's seeking to establish her own righteousness. And in doing so, she has not submitted to the righteousness of God. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. When we believe in Jesus Christ, the law has come to its end. The very thing that she's propping up to say that you need this in order to get into the kingdom of heaven. So I'm going to go ahead and play that clip through. And so we can comment on again, just kind of refresh ourselves. The guiding truth of God's basic commandments. Those with a good conscience fear God and treat others as they want to be treated. By obeying this guiding truth, they do righteous work and are doers of God's commandments. In Matthew 22, 37 to 40, Jesus says, I'm going to stop right there because she does say, you know, we do righteous works. And then she references the Ten Commandments. She's getting ready to say, but love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. As though you can do righteous works in accordance to the law. When whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law that the whole world will become guilty before God. And everyone every mouth would be stopped. Every mouth, everyone, no one has a righteous appeal in and of themselves. So righteousness, according to the gospel, according to scripture, does not come through the law. As Paul said, may I be found in him not having a righteousness of my own, which comes through the law, but that which comes through faith in Jesus Christ, even the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. So when she says, you know, working righteousness, and then she references the law, the law only shows guilt and it only shows unrighteousness. By the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for only by the law comes the knowledge of sin. Only by the law comes the knowledge that we're unrighteous, not that we're righteous. And that's the main problem with her, along with just about every other heretic that doesn't understand the functionality of the law, that it only shows universal guilt, not not righteousness. I'm just astounded at the scripture she brings up. I mean, I just know this woman thinks that what she's doing is going to be sufficient so that she may be called great in the kingdom of heaven and it's just it's absolutely astounding to me that she's convinced and deceived of this 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 nature that she has about herself it's reminds me of the serpent in the garden i mean it's just you know she's bewitched totally um yeah and then it says here it says here you know this is stringency stringency of the law but whoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. So that's where her salvation hinges upon. If she slits up, she slips up and calls somebody a fool in anger because she's so sick and tired of all these people boasting in the blood of Jesus Christ for their salvation. She ends up calling one of these people a fool. Well, she's in danger of the hellfire just for that, along with a multitude of other things that are listed in here. I wonder if she um I wonder if she actually uh Brings when she brings her gifts to the altar, Chris. Do you think she remembers to, you know, uh, settle her disputes with her brother? <laughs> yeah, she's not even taking the gifts to the altar. You know, if she's holding to that the law hasn't passed away, as Jesus said, not one jot or title of the law will pass away till all be fulfilled. 
Well, I believe and you believe when Jesus said it was finished, that all was fulfilled. And so the law has passed away for those who believe they're not under the law anymore. And that's why we don't do those sacrifices. You know, if we offend our brother, we don't take a sacrifice to the temple. So if she's still under the law, right. why isn't she doing that? If she's still, if she, right. she believes that the jot and the tittle hasn't passed away, then why is she right. not, yeah, why is she not taking the animal sacrifice? Because it's going to be a law unto herself that she creates, a bar that she can jump over, and she's going to be called great in the kingdom of heaven. She's yeah. waiting to be called great in the kingdom of heaven. She's not ready to lay her crown, which she won't have, down at, at the foot of Jesus Christ and bow and worship to an almighty God, to the holy lamb of God. I mean, she's just totally distorting the entire message that, you know, Christ came, suffered, and died for our sins according to the scriptures. I mean, she should read Isaiah 53, the entire chapter is dedicated to the fact that Jesus' suffering was to heal us, to save us from wrath, and to um, be bruised for our transgressions. So basically what she's saying is, for you to be saved, you have to stop sinning. It's, it's the same thing as saying, well, you have the flu, and we have the vaccine. The vaccine cures the flu, but I'm not giving you the vaccine because you have the flu. So you're sinning, so I won't forgive you for your sin because you're sinning. You have to stop sinning for me to get forgive you for your sin. That's what she's saying. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah, like you said at the beginning about her being a narcissist, she wants to be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And then denial of the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. She wants to believe that it's really her performance. It's not based on the blood by which we're righteous and holy in God's sight without blemish and free from accusation. It's really going to be her performance and she'll be in her misinterpretation of scripture and, and not understanding the functionality of the law. She believes that she is actually keeping the commandments one and that she will possibly be called great in the kingdom of heaven and that it's not referencing Christ. Actually, you know who she is. She's exactly who first John speaks of. Yeah. Antichrist. They deny the blood. They deny that Jesus came by the water and the blood. And that's exactly what she's doing. She's denying the Christ. She's an antichrist. And you're not supposed to pray for these people, nor risk them Godspeed, or let them near your home. Um, serious, serious fundamental flaws in her teaching. And she doesn't keep God's commandments. Yeah. She doesn't believe that the work of God is to believe on the one who he sent. Yeah, and that's why I blocked her. That's why I blocked her on my channel. I'm gonna go ahead and play the rest of the, the statement just to let it fill, just to finish out. And I think we'll probably, probably finish out here. We pretty much dealt with this lady clearly. We tried to correct her. She hasn't received correction. She's just doubling down. She's saying, which I believe is her father over here, to try to, mm -hmm. to try to make some kind of impression. But it's just, uh, just exposing these people for who they are. Let me go ahead and. Finish this out, play this clip. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. These two commandments are all the law and the prophets because they capture the substance of God's truth required to enter the kingdom of God. See, she said this is required to enter the kingdom of God. In other words, to be justified, not guilty in his sight, you have to keep the law, but the law just reveals universal guilt. So to be justified, God sent his son in order for us to be justified in his sight. We just believe on Jesus. And we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. We maintain a man is justified, not guilty verdict, independent from loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself. As yourself. So she's clearly teaching a false gospel. And it's just so clear. It's almost so redundant that we keep saying it. It's almost like these people 
it's like they're so they have such cognitive disconnect that they don't see such clear passages of scripture. She just brushes them under the rug. She'll never actually address them. Just like you left the comment on your channel. She hasn't addressed it. She'll never, she'll just always present one facet of scripture, you know, always saying things like, you know, Jesus said, many will say on me that day, Lord, Lord, and depart from me. You practice iniquity. And she'll probably use Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. She'll probably bring up verses in Matthew chapter five, Jesus talking about people under the law, never rightly dividing things, just showing one facet of the scripture without giving clarity to how one is actually saved and, and enters into eternal life. All right. So she, she, this is where, you know, this, what you're saying just brings up John three and John three twelve says, if I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you heavenly things? I tell you of heavenly things. So this woman is very earthly, very worldly, very carnal. And then verse 14 gives a context and a prerequisite to what it takes to get saved. Nicodemus clearly is inquiring about this. It says in verse 14, as a, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Here's the context. Moses lifted up the serpent and all the children of Israel had to do was lay their eyes upon it and they were saved from death. This is a clear archetype of how easy it is to get saved by putting your faith in Jesus Christ and doing the polar opposite of what the satanic devil woman is teaching. Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel your righteous indignation. Absolutely. She's distorting the gospel. She doesn't care. Uh, the sinister actions she's actually doing what it will actually create in people as far as the children of god who actually believe in the son they'll fall in fear and condemnation guilt they'll seek a false self justification of the law it'll keep them from bearing fruit it will produce the power of sin in their life having this law conceptualization she doesn't care about rightly dividing things and actually showing how the law reveals how or the scripture reveals how the law just produces the power of sin what she's actually trying to put people under. It actually keeps people from bearing fruit. These are things I think we've pretty much covered in the other video. And, uh, you know, I think this has been a, another good example of, it's a good example of occultic mentality and behavior, how they don't want to actually reason with you. They just came over, carpet bomb my subs, carpet bomb your subs. When you actually commented back to her to try to get a response, she doesn't even she doesn't even reply. She doesn't even respond to you. She couldn't properly exegete any of these passages in light of her doctrine. Romans chapter three, four, and five. She must tear out of her Bible and go right to any passages that she can isolate and perform eisegesis on. Totally destroy the Word of God and do it with a smile on her face. Yeah, absolutely. Well, brother, thank you for joining me for this again. I think we had a great time critiquing this as far as going over scripture. It edifies us. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We grow in our faith as we go over scripture again, and find out the functionality of the law, what Jesus has done. We can rejoice and boast in and take full confidence in. We're the true circumcision who take no confidence in the flesh, but boast in Christ Jesus. Worship God in the spirit, something she's not doing. She's taking confidence in her flesh. And she's not boasting in Christ Jesus. So she can't be in the spirit. She's in the flesh. And and unfortunately, if she doesn't repent and believe the real gospel, she will come under God's wrath on the day of judgment. Yeah, I just wanted to add in that the God of this world has blinded them. Okay. And and she she's she's one of them who it seems to be blinded by the God of this world that they will not come to see uh the light that entered into the world. And um, that they might be saved. And it's just, uh, it, it is great edification. This stuff seems basic to us, but there's a lot of new believers out there. And I hope this reaches their ears and brings them peace and understanding. That they can know they have an eternal position with God that's already been stored up for them. And that the work of God is to believe on the Son. And that's a direct command from Jesus that you simply believe on him. 
uh, for your salvation. And that's the work that's required. It's really like tongue in cheek. There is no work required. It's something you do with your heart and your mind. You believe on the Son unto righteousness, and thou shalt be saved. 